<laughs> the elk looks really funny up there. Hi everyone, my name is Jasmina and I've been traveling for the past few years solo. So today I wanted to make this video where I share with you travel mistakes to avoid when traveling solo as a female. And these are also based on my personal experience. Traveling solo is definitely a learning experience and I know that there's many people that are still learning on the way and making mistakes is actually really good because you will learn to never do them again. But I know there's many of you that haven't even started traveling yet so I just thought it would be really cool to share uh, a video like this. So starting off with number one which is try to arrive during the day and not at night time. I would avoid arriving at night time but of course I've been very guilty of doing this especially arriving in cities that you are not familiar with. That is just very very risky. It's just not the safest and most comforting feeling when arriving at night and you're not familiar with the place. There's just a lot of things that can go wrong. The benefit of arriving during the day is that you will have enough time to actually see the place during the day. So once you land, you can just probably check in, go out, visit all the places that you wanna go to. So I think it's a really, really good benefit. So if you have that option, I would really recommend that you would arrive during the day. Don't plan too much. And I know as a solo traveler, you have all this free time. But the thing many times that we tend to do is that when we over plan, we just think that, okay, we can do all of this because you don't have no one, you know, hanging around you. So you can just pretty much go on your way. But that is often not the case, especially now when I'm traveling with my husband, it's a lot more easier to plan stuff together because when you travel solo, there's gonna be a lot of hiccups. You're gonna be checking where to go. You're gonna check the direction you're just going to be thinking about a lot of things at the same time but now when I travel with my husband it's like if one of us feel like we're not going the right way one of us is always going to point it out as an example so I feel like you should not plan too much because there can happen a lot of hiccups along the way so what I would suggest doing is if you're planning to stay in this place for a few days and you don't have that much time just list down the things that you really really want to see and then the other stuff is just like a bonus but also on that other note don't plan too little as well as that is also not a good thing so just make sure that when you plan these things you're actually up to doing it you don't have to have a full-on schedule of what you're gonna do for those next few days because there might be days where you're just not feeling it so just Go easy on yourself. The next one is not telling taxis how you're going to pay slash not doing enough research on transportation on the place that you're visiting. I have been guilty of doing this. Okay, so this was back in the day when I was not familiar with Grab, Uber, and all of that. There were times that I did use a taxi and because, you know, normally in first world countries or for legit taxis when you go in, they normally, they accept card or, you know, some don't even accept cash. Always inform them, like right before you even get in, just let them know how you're going to pay so that then you can, you know, actually plan what you're gonna do. You need to do your research on transportation. You also need to check if you're planning to go with trains, metros, or just local transportation, you need to make sure that you check also what time is the cutoff because there's many places where there's a certain cutoff time for transportation. So you have to make sure that you have all that sorted and that once you arrive it's just going to be a smooth sailing to go to wherever you're going to. Next one is standing out. So I know when people go on their vacations or travel, they are going to want to look their best and I can understand that. But when I mean standing out, if you're going to a place that, you know, locals don't really stand out or you're just going to a place where it's just not common to be so many tourists around, it's not the wisest to have flashy things out such as, you know, your phone, your headphones or wearing, I don't know, a golden jacket or whatever. It's just, it's just not the wisest thing that you can do, especially even in big cities nowadays. Pickpocketing is very common these days. There's going to be people they're just gonna rob you in broad daylight so it's good not to stand out too much you also don't want unwanted attention so yeah this is a thing that I notice most most new travelers do, which is telling people that they're traveling alone, which of course I completely understand that I have been guilty of doing that too in my first few years traveling because it's just such a proud thing to say to people that oh I'm traveling alone you know 
But the thing about this is that when you tell the wrong people this, they're gonna have really, really bad intentions. They're going to just try and manipulate the whole thing. And also there's gonna be many of them that are just gonna think that you're stupid and that you cannot make your own decisions and you don't know what you're actually doing. People are just weird. So you need to make sure that you are careful who you tell these things to. I'm not saying like, fine, you can tell your friends, but if it's like a new acquaintance, I would avoid saying that at all and just maybe if they were to ask you, can just say I'm traveling with a friend. You're never alone. Always remember that you are never alone <laughs> because people, they don't always have the best intentions. So yeah. Okay. Another thing that I have noticed so many people not do actually, many people who start traveling don't even want to travel around their own continent. They do it like probably after all the crazy experiences they've had, which of course most of the time it does end up working out really well, but many times I see travelers, they decide to go to a whole other continent right away. That That's great. You want to of course experience other parts of the world. If it's your first time, it is good to just be in a more familiar area. I just think it's gonna warm you up for the upcoming traveling experiences that you're going to have. When I started traveling solo, I started off in Europe because, well, I'm from Europe, so I started off traveling within Europe. And like I said, this was like my solo time. I have traveled in other countries before, but that was like when I was like a child with my parents. When I first traveled solo, I just went around my own continent first before going to other countries and such. Later gram. So I know many people do like to post real time but many times that's a really big risk to do because even if you don't have a very high following there's still gonna be people out there that are gonna track your every move. If you really want to keep up with your Instagram and all that or wherever you're posting I would really suggest that you do it once you go to the next city or even after your trip. The next one is being too friendly and this is a habit that many of us are so guilty of doing. I can understand that you as a person, you are very nice, you're very kind, you probably have the purest intentions. People that you may need, like your new acquaintances, they might not. When you're going to places that you're not familiar with, it's important to note that not everyone's like you, not everyone's gonna think the same. So you should really remain cautious at all times because not everyone has the purest intentions. And I also have a bonus one, which is don't overpack. Every one of us overpacks and then we end up not even using half of the things that we get. Even now I did in my most recent travels, which is crazy to think. I suggest that you mix and match outfits. Make sure you have like, you know, your necessities and maybe have one evening dress or something. Just don't like have too many of it because you're just gonna run out of space. You're gonna wander in the end of the trip. You probably, during the trip, you're gonna buy things. You're just not gonna have space. So when you do pack, it's it's good to also have a little bit of extra space just so that, you know, in case you buy stuff, it's just all gonna fit and you're not gonna have to worry if your bag will fit on the airplane or not. Well, there you have it. That was pretty much it for this video. I really hope that you like and enjoyed this video. It would mean a lot to me if you'd subscribe to my channel and give it a like and comment down below what did you think of this video and do you do any of these? So I hope to see you in the very next video. Well, we'll see you. We will see you in the very next video. So stay tuned for more content like this and see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.